Michigan State loses a game that, hey, in the end, doesn't really matter anyway on the basketball court. And then, unfortunately, yeah, we're going to talk about the football game that still does matter. And then we're going to play a game, Misery or Hope, with Kevin Greck of Can't Read, Can't Write. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Spartans is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College, all one word for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, thank you so much for kicking off your day with us here at Locked On Spartans. Your team in green and white, five days a week. Please rate, review, and subscribe. And that's enough of me blabbing because, hey, we have a great guest on today. It is one-third of the wonderful Can't Read, Can't Write podcast. He goes by the name of Kevin Grek. And Kevin, I know that the latest episode name for you guys was Life is Pain, which is yeah. a beautiful title. It sums everything up. But uh, I guess, how are you doing uh, just with that said? I mean, how are any of us doing, Sheehan? That's a like, great point. Truly. Yeah. We- yeah. When you asked me to, when you reach out to have me on this episode, I thought to myself, sure. no, I can't. <laughs> I'm not interested. I, I don't want to go there. But then yeah. it occurred to me, none of us should be alone right now. And the mm-hmm. idea that you would have to continue to talk about this football team and now this basketball team with yeah. an exhibition match that didn't go exactly to plan. Like, I couldn't leave you hanging like that. And I thought, thank you. Thank you. Fine. I'll go on. If he insists, my my health insurance will uh, be paying you somehow, some way for this uh, medical health rescue that you have provided me with. Because yes, misery loves company here. And Kevin, we are going to start with that little shooty hoops game that happened on Sunday, and we did not get to this on the last episode. Talk football, so that's why we're going to kick it off here with just some basketball right now. And they lost a game that does not matter whatsoever, eighty nine to eighty eight against Tennessee. And uh, Kevin, I got to say, like. I, over here, I don't know if it's because like football's beat me down so much, or just you know the fact that they're hey wearing Hawaiian shirts on the sideline. This is for charity. Whoop de doop de. After that game, I I really like wasn't moved or like you know charged up after that game. I was like okay, I actually liked a lot of what I saw. But we'll let you bat first here. Were you just throwing coffee mugs across the room and storming out of the house and just committing crime, or what were you doing after the game? Well, all of that had been done in the first ten minutes. Okay. That's, that's when that's I accomplished good. all of that. Where it was <laughs> like oh. This is actually, after all of the fanfare and all the excitement, this is actually the same team as last year with some true freshmen that we've added into the mix. But they settled down. They stopped turning the ball over. And and then they brought it into, what was it, within three at the half? Within one? Yeah, I think so. I think it was three. Yeah. And then with Rick Barnes and Tom Izzo providing live commentary, we got to just see another full half of basketball of these two really good teams going at it. And I am with you in the end. I was encouraged after all to kind of see what the guy, the new guys have and what the experienced guys are adding to their repertoire. I feel like, look, it's over here. Very blessed to have two young boys and I will, my whole life be speaking very highly of them but holy smokes kevin i i might be speaking about cohen carr higher than any of them like he is everything that we wanted to be and more and i know he didn't like drop like 25 points or anything like that but my god just the highlights alone are a hoot and a half jeremy fears uh looked considerably better than he did in the hillsdale game when he was super charged up Uh, xavier booker another splash three you know it was a lot of fun but and I know that this is a really weird angle to take maybe because we are the top five team. We were at home. Tennessee was the one missing their two starting guards. Yeah. But yeah, I, I leave overly optimistic here. And tell me if this is a weird take or not, if I'm just like grasping onto anything possible that can make me happy. But I'm almost glad it went the way it did with Michigan State starting down 17-1. Again, this is a, I, I will not be saying this if this is how the Champions Classic goes here in a few weeks. Right. But the fact that they gave themselves a game down 17-1 against a top 10 team in the nation and then showed themselves that they can claw back in that game. Last year was the opposite. Last year they had these great leads and then lost them. And then, oh my God, if you remember the Portland game, it's like, uh, is this contagious with the team? Well, stuff like that can be contagious the other way around. And if you played sports, even at like a middle school level, like if you're on a team that knows that they have a comeback in their pocket, 
I, I don't think it's necessarily like the worst way to spend an exhibition. And at the end of the day, too, you lost. So Tom Izzo gets to rail on this team oh, dude. during practice. Oh. Like, it, I've never been happier seen a loss. Again, air quotes, it didn't count. But like, is that, is that just a weird way of looking at this game, Kevin? I don't think it's a weird way of looking at it. I, I think that Thanks. overall, yeah. like, truly, this doesn't matter. Tom... Although I do want to talk to you about this minutes distribution. It's interesting Please. to me, like how yeah. even it is. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if this is just exhibition or if this is what we can expect to see over the course of the, uh, over the course of the season. But overall, very encouraged. I do like the idea of that just being like, let's spot Tennessee 17 points and just see what happens. You know, why right. not? Let's not? make it interesting for the people in the stands. You know, yes. if we just blow the doors off, this isn't fun at all. Right. Um, so I'm with you on that. And I'm also with you that you would exchange one of your sons for Cohen Carr. I think that's probably the best way to make sure that they stay in line is just yeah. even whatever their accomplishments are, like you get handed a really nice drawn like picture of you and one of your sons and he like hands it to you. You just yeah. look at it and say, Cohen would be dunking in this or something uh, and hand it back so that he's always looking for your approval. That's yeah. the most important thing. No, and that's just sound parenting because like a few weeks ago before my son's third birthday, like he he wrote his own name. Like the letters were jumbled. It was very impressive, but yeah. it, it's not an alley oop where he's almost hitting the head on the rim. You know, like mm -hmm. that writing your name doesn't get you a full ride college scholarship and then a promising pro NBA career. So it, it just right. is what it is. I'm I'm sorry, Kim. It's just business. You'll understand one day, I'm sure. Um any concerns for this game? Like, let's not kid ourselves. Like, a loss is a loss. So, of course, whether it counts or not, just as talking heads like me and you are, we got to get on a microphone and have a meltdown about something here. Did, did anything change for you? Like, is there a new concern that bubbled to the surface? Or are you saying to yourself, well, I don't know if it's a top five team, maybe a top 15 team, or like anything sour come out of this game for you? I've got to take, I'm going to give to you. Bounce this Please. off of you. Let's go. Effectively, we've lost Joey Hauser. And now yep. instead of coming off the bench, Malik Hall is, is taking that role. Is yep. the starting five actually a step back now from last year? Of course, the supporting the supporting parts are better, but mm -hmm. the starting five, is it actually a weaker team than what we saw at the end of last season? I can't say it's not right now. I'm hopeful that it can change. And I hope it's not just because I am a massive stockholder, maybe a majority stockholder of Malik Hall. And yet mm -hmm. I, I get that he's a completely different player than Joey Hauser, this, this, and that. But like that, that was a tough game for him yesterday. Again, yeah, he had I surgery mean, he, in the offseason. I'll keep saying that. Like, you know, maybe he's not himself yet. But yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a tough one. He had some massive rebounds, big boards yeah. going down yeah. the stretch, needed those mm -hmm. to keep it interesting. Yeah. But that shot of his is a going concern for me. And again, oh, like yeah. you said, he's got the, the surgery that we can point at. But yeah. I wonder if we're never going to see what what's the uh, what's the top moment in Malik Carr's career? Is it that like Georgia game where he just like it's took over the, as a freshman? That or the Seton Hall game, you know, Seton like the, the old game. where he absolutely buried them. That was a fun one. Or hey, just when he came back from his injury against Indiana last year. I, I mean, we're you know he's first they thought that they were going to put him down like an alien horse, and then like he comes back and the power slams it at the Breslin Center. So that was fun, but. <laughs> No, here's so here is the thing with Malik Hall. Again, I, I'm I'm a huge Malik Hall guy. I think he got way too much flack last year. Yada yada yada. Whatever. Kevin, I don't know if I need to see nine field goal attempts from Malik Hall because my thing in the offseason too is like it's great that he's coming back because he's also going to know his role with the team. He knows he's not going to yeah. be a first, second, third option and the offense at any given time. Well, mm, mm. nine field goal attempts mm. with a shot is looking that at early on in the game. I, that, that that's that's one thing. Is, want to keep the eye on here is like maybe not nine shots every game uh, call me old-fashioned but i like the yeah. guard shooting a little more so yeah yeah, yeah. And what is this tyson walker taking over the headband business like i thought that that was a trey holloman thing i thought that was like what trey was contributing to the team but now that there's two of them doing it like I know. how much how much cassius winston energy is there to go around is my next question and it's like very, very confusing for you know us fans too. Like I'm watching this Hillsdale game on my iPhone that has a cracked screen, so like this isn't great picture quality here. Right. And I see you know this guy with a headband drain a three pointer. I'm like, oh my god, Trey Holland is Trey. Like, oh, Trey, oh my gosh. What? 
And then nice to yeah, meet you. Finally, no. Say, right? no, it's Tyson. It's like, oh, it's our forty-five percent three-point shoot. That's just what he does. So, like, it's like I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know if I like everyone like changing their identity like this. So it's so that that'll take a while to come around to. But I'd be mad if I was Trey Hallman. I'd be like, dude, this was yeah. my one thing to ingratiate <laughs> right. myself with the fan base, and you're taking this from me. Come Stepping on, completely directly on my turf. Kevin, we got to switch it to football here. I do have one more basketball thing that I do want to talk about. It's going to pertain yeah. to the big men here, and it's kind of maybe a concern, or maybe it's always been a concern, and I've just opened up my eyes to it right now. But I'm so sorry i got to send you to the bench because i got to talk to people's ears off about game time. You've heard me talk about game time the last few weeks or months or however long you've been listening to the show because they are the best ticketing app out there. I was on today just curious, you know, to see what the Monday night ticket sales were going to be like for this Detroit Lions game. And, man, they had the flash deals popping. You'll find deals on there that you will not find anywhere else. And also, hey, let's say it's not just sports that you're interested in. Let's say you like a good concert or a nice theatrical performance. Game Time has any event in your area with the flash deals, the last-minute deals, and also when you buy them, They just get sent straight to your phone. You're not going to go through your emails while you're outside the venue with no service, kind of panicking, wondering, oh, my God, I'm never going to get in here. Like, no, it's it's so simple with game time. You simply cannot believe it. And also, well, they want to make life a little easier on you as well with their promo code. When you go to game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college. That is all one word locked on college for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Again, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for twenty dollars off your first purchase and also if you are watching on youtube hey right behind me if i could point the right direction the team ticker sign has been a smashing success here i absolutely love this thing it is high tech it updates stats weather forecast for the upcoming football game the countdown clock even for the olympic sports like women's soccer cross country they have all things green and white playing behind me on this sign but also Kind of looks retro, too, with that nice little LED display. I absolutely love my team ticker sign. And, well, if you know Spartan in your life, now is the best time to shop for them because at teamticker.com, when you smash in promo code locked on, not for much longer, just till the end of October, you're going to get $50 off your team ticker sign order. This is a new company, guys. All right? If you know someone with a man cave or a sweet garage setup or something, odds are not a lot of people in Michigan State country have this sign, so make them have the best with team ticker at teamticker.com promo code locked on and let's get kevin greck back into the mix here we we will be talking about football here but i guess we're just kicking that can down the road here because um this is stupid this is something that like we should have known and just should have talked about but like are the big men going to be a concern and i say that understanding that carson cooper like still looks fine two exhibition games down one against the division two school where he looked fantastic of course and then Tennessee, I thought he held his own. Yeah. He was fine. And you can win some serious Big Ten accolades, national accolades, without like an elite big man. But still, between right now, Mati Sissoko and Carson Cooper, is that enough, you think? I I think, I don't have a clear answer yet, but like, yeah, watching yesterday, I was like, oh, that's right. Like, yeah, Mati Sissoko, like we could hope for improvement. And the only thing that we've gotten this offseason is that, hey, he's gained 15 pounds of muscle, which like, I don't know if respectfully if that was ever the problem if, if that, <laughs> like, if we needed that it, like i i'm not sure if that was what was missing but like yeah. okay thanks but like, I, the big men like ah, i don't know where, where do you st- do you think they're going to be good enough for this team you think Madi sissoko adds 50 more pounds of muscle still as many rebounds as <sighs> xavier booker who doesn't know what muscle <laughs> is i think um that is actually if can we count xavier booker in the list of bigs or you focus entirely on you know what for for well, for now yeah you know, for, for now because he will be playing minutes at the five so yeah we might as well right well we're told maybe for like small ball i think my big takeaway on booker so far is he's not ready physically for college mm-hmm. basketball yet that's become okay. obvious to me basically he's a three-point shot and he's a great three-point shot we've seen him splash several that you know the pick and pop is going to be very effective with him yep um but I'm actually the way that you are all in on uh, Cohen Carr. I'm all in on uh, Carson Cooper, kind of flipping the script and taking those minutes from Madi Sissoko here in the mm-hmm. nearish term. Uh, we've been seeing Madi in the in the starting lineup, and he may remain there. But I think when yeah. it comes to winning time in a month, two months, it's going to be Carson Cooper on the court in those 
crucial moments. There's there's like nothing I hate more than getting on here during basketball season and like having the, the Madi Sissoko conversation. Because like, look, he, he had some great games last year. Mm-hmm. But also too, it, it's like th- this kid is so much better of a human being than I will ever be. Like, like yeah. he is salt of the earth, like such an upstanding citizen of the world. Like that he is by all accounts, a Spartan. Like he, this right. is truly one of the best people out there, but like, I just, I think we're just going to see year four of the same thing. And yeah. that doesn't make me all too thrilled with national championship aspirations, but like, um, Hey, season's young still hasn't even started yet. Technically Kevin. So, Look at us. Maybe things can change. Maybe another champion's classic lightning in the bottle moment can happen. And we could dream after that. I don't know. It's just uncomfortable. And you know what? There's still time. But from what we're seeing right now, I think maybe instead of that 15 pounds of of added muscle, maybe we added something to the game instead. Uh, A post move? Just one? Yeah. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm going to stop because now I'm just, I just feel so dirty and I'm going to have to take a shower after this because Madi's like just the best kid mm-hmm. that you could ever ask for. Uh, all right, let's do it. Football time. Um, Kevin, let's just start the conversation here right now. Actually, let's, you know, as, as like optimistic and cheery as we could possibly do it. What's been the rock bottom moment for you this season? Like what, what, or moments, I guess we don't have sure. to keep the singular. We could add some plurals on to here, but uh because I got one instantly, but who wants to hear that from me again? I, I, I want to hear from you what the rock. I'm actually interested was. in what your like one stand up moment is because to mm-hmm. me it's like a cornucopia of a of a mess. I, we got Thanksgiving Since coming up. I, like I remember nice. cornucopias from like elementary school. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. some reason, cornucopias like like the Bermuda Triangle just sort of like disappear <laughs> right. from your life yeah. after quicksand, age. right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, Anyway, our cornucopia of an S show, because it's this is a uh-huh. family show that we're on. This is a family show. swear I can't read, can't write, if that's uh, important to you. You know, sure. add it to your media diet. Um, anyway, uh, to me, if I had to choose just one, it would be when I came to realize during the Rutgers game that this team was going to lose. And it wasn't just going to be like last minute play, Rutgers pulls it off, rushes the field. Yeah. It was going to be like they are just going to just systematically return yes. into this game. We are going to bumble it several more times and there's nothing that we can do about it. And I realized that with like 10 or 15 minutes. I mean, oh yeah, our man Ross Ells hadn't even gotten started yet when it became clear to me that that was going to happen. So in spite of the fact that in the third quarter of a 49 point loss uh, to our biggest rival, we had to release a statement apologizing about Hitler. Uh, that was not my moment. It was during the Rutger. <laughs> right. That that was when all hope truly was lost for me. And I thought there's no chance for any redemption at all this season, which is where I'm at right now. What about you? What's yours? Well, I mean, I was there. I, I'm I'm not even kidding. Like that was my moment. It was after the three and out, after the you know botch punt thing, whatever against Rutgers. I think MSU was still up ten or something like that. But still, yeah. like th- that's when you knew that. Like, mm, yep, we know how this one's gonna end. That was a pretty bad feeling. But uh, Kevin, my, my moment has not even happened on a Saturday during a game. It happened Sunday morning when I opened my FanDuel app and I saw that we are at home, three point underdogs against Nebraska. Woof. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that Nebraska first year under Matt Rule out of the Big Ten West has been mid at best for the better part of 10, 15 years. I never thought the season could get this bad where we are trying to play, spoiler, at home. At home. On this quasi-senior night that we're going to call it, I guess, because it's the last game of Spartan Stadium. Like that – that's when it like I I had a pretty good grasp of like how horrible things have gotten, but that's when gravity really hit me. Is when I open up FanDuel, I see MSU plus three. Did how <laughs> like, did you at oh. least think to yourself, time to go all in on Nebraska? Because there's I, no chance. Of, <laughs> right? Like bet the farm on that at three points. 
you, you know what hurt the most is that when I saw it too, like it made sense too. Like that 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 was the ultimate. Like I'm on the ground, but that was the kick right in the genitalia. Is like oh it and and I can't argue it. Like the right team is favored here. Like that right. It's, like no, after there, the, there can be no sorry, joy no, for no. us. There can be no, no redemption. And like no. we are we are staring down a winless Harlan Barnett head coaching tenure. Impressive. I, I don't like it's this game in Indiana, and I don't think we're gonna win either one. I think it's over. I think Harlan Barnett is gonna go winless in his time as MSU's head football coach. You ready for this? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Paul Fanson, he goes by Dr. Green and White on Twitter. It does great mm -hmm. work for Spartans Illustrated. Go subscribe, Spartans Illustrated. Great people there. Good Reach pitch. out to him just saying, like, hey, what uh what's what's the hypothetical spread gonna be for Nebraska and Indiana? Kevin, he did the numbers. He crunched them all in his very smart brain or a calculator. It doesn't matter. What do you think the projected spread of Spartans versus Hoosiers is set to be? MSU versus Indiana? At Indiana? MSU versus at Indiana. Indiana by seven and a half. It's Indiana by four. Okay. Which is all right. Not as bad. bad as I thought. Okay. See, we're, we're, we're bringing out the sunlight behind the clouds right now. Only slight underdogs against Indiana. <laughs> oh, On the God, road. I hate it here. Like, against a program that uh, their fan base thinks they can't fire their coach because they're in too deep with his contract. And that's the only reason he'll be back next year. Um, Imagine that problem, huh? <laughs> yeah. At least, at <laughs> least we're not there. We got that on <laughs> <Right>. Indiana. <laughs> Suckers. Oh, my God. All right, we're going to play a game. I don't even know if it's a game as much as like a conversation setup, but it's called Misery or Hope because we're feeling a lot of one and maybe not a lot of the other. I don't know. It's going to be Kevin to decide that, Misery or Hope. Mm. But first, you need to talk your ear off about FanDuel. That's right. Hey, we were just talking about these guys, and maybe you just heard me say – MSU underdogs, well, psh, certainly they can't lose every single game, right? If you're feeling spicy about the Spartans, mosey on over to FanDuel. It is America's number one sports book. Gang, let's say that you know, you're just sick of Saturdays. So like, no, no, I'm done with college football. Okay, well, hey, get the NFL season fired up with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's right, any, any. $5 money line bet and is 150 bucks if your team wins. Just peruse the menu of NFL games, pick a massive favorite, and then just go crazy and, well, win 150 bucks. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So what are you waiting for, gang? Visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown and kick off the NFL season. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Let's get the one, the only Kevin Greck of Can't Read, Can't Write back into the mix here and play some game show music in your head because I don't want to get struck with like a royalty lawsuit or anything like that. But it's time for Misery or Hope. Woo! Kevin, I'm just going to lay out a scenario that's actually happening yeah. in real life. And you're going to tell me if that brings you some misery or if it brings you hope as a Michigan State fan. We're going to start off with a game that happens Saturday night. Wisconsin. Okay. Ohio State, Wisconsin under first-year head coach Luke Fickle. They actually kept the game competitive against Ohio State. And I'm conflicted whether that's misery or hope because, well, Michigan State in the three years under Mel Tucker, or what's about to be a fourth time, has been competitive against Ohio State for a combined 17 seconds likely. Okay, like, and here you are, you're watching Wisconsin. Oh, my God, it's just year one for them, and they're already competitive against the Buckeyes. But, or the hope is that, hey, next year, Things can really change this quickly with the, you know, paradigm between the Buckeyes and teams like Wisconsin and us. Does that bring you hope or misery or is it somewhere in between, Kevin? Well, Matt Sheehan, I think you're going to find a theme in all my answers to these questions. It's peak uh -oh. misery because okay. <laughs> Luke Fickle was supposed to be the coach. And depending on which rumors you believe yeah. and which what all the, you know, was he extended an offer? Was he not? Why didn't he come here? He was, by all accounts, the first choice. I mean, we don't have to pretend that Mel Tucker was the first choice anymore. We can just admit sure. that it was that it was him. Yeah. And he's yeah. not here. And he's not walking through that door next year. So no. <laughs> any of his accomplishments that he has at Wisconsin directly reflect on us and should provide us even greater misery than we have 
right now, though the cup runneth over. So I, I don't even know that it matters, uh, but I cannot find any hope in this case. Okay, well, that was that was my best one that I had for you so, as far as it's going to be just straight misery out. now from here on out. Okay, it, it might be because like you will have to do some serious mental gymnastics to be on the hope side of this, or maybe not. Um, down just in Evanston, drink some bleach here real quick. Then, uh... well, I mean, I, this is what I had before we started recording, so I'm out of my supply over here. Um, yep. down in uh, Evanston, nice little uh neighborhood mm -hmm. outside of Chicago, Illinois, there's yeah, this, a team at Northwestern. This yeah, let's just cut to the chase here. Um, they're four and four, <laughs> like against all odds. Like not, not only are they respectfully, I'm sorry, like we have no room to talk as Michigan State fans right now, but they're Northwestern. Uh, they have no reason to like be fired up on football to begin with. But then they had the whole hazing scandal. Their head coach leaves, and they're over under to begin the season. Like wasn't even high in the first place. I think it was two and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, they're already at four and four, and that means they have to win two of the next four games against Iowa. Wisconsin, Purdue, or Illinois. I mean, they just beat Maryland, something that, well, our Spartans couldn't do. And they beat Minnesota. And the same theme with the last thing I just said. They're two games away from a bowl. Does it bring you any hope whatsoever? It's like, hey, you know what? If they can do it, we can turn things around last year. Or is it just misery as in the sense that, like, oh, they just went through all that almost at the same time we did. And one program is responding substantially worse than the other one. I think I know the answer here, but just go, just please go. Yeah, this is pure misery. Um, it goes to show that it is possible for a coaching staff to put together a winning campaign after just missing its head football coach. And it can be done. And our team has something like infinitely more uh, stars on it. If we go by the recruiting ratings uh, than Northwestern's yeah. does. And yeah. yet against Similar competition, we get housed by Maryland and we puke down the front of our shirts against Minnesota and then wet ourselves um, and then roll in it on the ground. I don't even know. Um, so it goes to show that even, even it, it, when you don't pay five guys on your coaching staff, even ones that aren't wearing headsets over a million dollars a year, uh, you can actually still win games without a head coach. So misery, pure misery. This game sucks. This yeah. this, this, this was stupid. I, I have a long talk with the executive producer of this show. After Tell you this, what, which, no matter what you here. say for the next one, I'm going to say hope. So Good. I, another Good. long draw on the bleach for this. Good. We'll get ready. Because yeah. Kevin, it's just Michigan State football. Mm -hmm. Do you have hope or do you mm -hmm. have misery for the next two months of Michigan State football. Now, of course, we got a month of these four games coming up. Okay, that goes without saying, unless you're insane, respectfully, sorry if you're a diehard Spartan, that it's going to be mm -hmm. miserable this month. Okay, like, let's not mm -hmm. get it twisted. Mm -hmm. Coaching hire, though, happens in that following month. New light? Excitement? Where are you at here with Michigan State football in the next two months? Do you have hope or misery? Because I got to say, like, despite what happens on Saturdays, I, I am very excited for the next chapter already. No matter mm -hmm. who it is, whether it's Urban, whether it's Chris Creighton, it's something new. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's Those are the two thing. options, right? Those are the only two. That's what it's down to, unfortunately. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They're both on that private jet to and from Sarasota, just duking it out. Who's going to get the job? But yeah, that's unfortunately who we got here. I, I think the rumors are Chris Creighton, uh, 15 million a year or five year contract, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Um, yep. Coordinator say, yep. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. <clears throat> so I remember what I said to you just before. Okay. Nice. So here's some things that are going to happen over the next two months. We're, whoever it might be, we're going to get a head football coach, new one, brand new one. Um, the entire staff will be dismissed. Maybe there's an argument to be made for one or two of the assistant coaches, but I think maybe that's, in, you know, at the top end. Uh, we're going to get to see a lot of young talent on the field. And we'll, yeah. you know, we'll see a little bit of churn probably in all likelihood. Yeah. Um, and all of those factors make me completely miserable because we're going to get annihilated in games over and over and over again. Who knows who we're going to hire? I don't know. You don't know. None of us know. Um, uh, no. <laughs> and uh, and half the team's going to go into the transfer portal. And I don't know if there's enough NIL funds to bring them all back the way that Simeon Barrow did. So uh, it's misery. It's just straight misery with maybe some glimmer of hope if you 
Let's drink hard enough. I hate to do this, but I'm I'm going to edit this entire segment out and just replace it with just elevator. drop it. Just elevator drop music. It. Yeah, yeah. Th this is being left on the cutting room floor. Um, Here, I I've got some hope for us. Uh and it ties into yeah, your, please. Uh, it ties into <laughs> some of your uh sponsorships. Game time. Uh Dang. you're not gonna believe this, Sheehan. There are tickets available for this Nebraska game. So if you have like a uh you know if you if you have a family member that doesn't understand how football works or operates in any way or or doesn't uh oh, have boy. feelings, um, now is the time to take them to an MSU game, get them in the stadium. The lines, here's hope. The lines oh. for beer will be shorter for this game because it's gonna yes. be an empty house. Uh, <laughs> yes. but head on over to game time, take your least football engaged family and friends with you and get the cheapest tickets in this yeah. the 100th year of Spartan Stadium. That's a great sell job. I love that. You know how you can like drink around the world at Epcot? Like you can drink around the stadium in every yep. single beer kiosk in less than 7 minutes probably. Like it, it, lines You'll are not going to be the issue here. <laughs> You'll see me there. I'll be I'll be sauntering in between the the beer kiosks and then the troughs and back and forth yes. and back and forth. <laughs> Oh man, a meteor is going to hit the 50 yard line and your family friends are going to ask you about it. like, Oh my God, what, what were you, did you see it? It was nuts. You're like, Oh, I never even looked at a blade of grass on the field. Yep. Yep. So I've been, I was in the, the tunnels of Spartan stadium. Oh my God. It's, you know what? Like, and, and here's something that I just got a rise out of a few days ago. I'm part of like way too many Facebook groups uh, on, uh, sorry, Michigan state groups on Facebook. And like someone, I hope they're not a listener. Someone was selling their tickets for the Nebraska game for like face value, like a hundred dollars each. It's like, sir, I like that. That's just, that's just mean. Like you, yeah. you are just swindling people. Like, yeah. well, like you can get into this game with a firm handshake. I think like, yeah. this is not going. And I hope people do. I, okay, I hope they fill up the stands. I'll reiterate a lot of what I said yesterday. Like, we support these kids. This is like you talk about an unimaginably bad situation for a college football player. Like, this is probably it. This sucks. This is horrible. I hope they get the support, but like whew. seats to be had on the game time app. Nice plug there. Nice. There are. What's the coupon code again? Remind me. That's locked on college for $20 off your first purchase at game time. Um, My man. No, thank you. Uh, I, I knew this was going to be a great chat beforehand. Like I, I love talking to you guys. Um, can't read, can't write. I had uh, Alex Jones on not too long ago. Sorry, Mike, jo Alex Jones. Th now, that would be a fun guest to that, have. In the that would get you some, some clicks we there, Sheehan. Well, we're, we're going to work on that, actually. No, Mike Jones, Alex Plum is the other one we mm -hmm. still have yet to have on. But, uh, wow, he has a way with words. I, he had his fastball on today's episode of Life is Pain. I wish I could say 95% of it, but, again, family show. So you guys just have to go to Can't Read, Can't Write to go listen to the great work of you three guys. Just a fantastic podcast you guys put out. It's it's the best. It's really the best. So thanks a lot, Kevin. You're you're the man. Really appreciate you. Sheehan, it's a pleasure. Until next time, uh, which probably will be happier because I – no, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say how could basketball get any worse. We're not even going to go there. That's another thing that we'll edit out. That's fine. A lot of editing to do. Oh, crap. All right, guys. Well, hey, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Love you all. Go green. <laughs>